So I'd like to introduce Hannah Jakobsen from uh, Rambel in Denmark, and she will be giving uh, a talk about uh, your master thesis that was about intensive care units in Copenhagen, where you evaluate your findings towards the Danish standard. So yeah. thank oh. you. Okay. Very welcome. Um, yeah, so my name is Hannah Jacobsen. I work in the Danish um, depart uh, acoustic and noise department in Rambøll. But as Maria said, today I'm here to talk about my master thesis, which I did last winter. Um, oh, I first want to say that this is only an extract of the whole project. So afterwards, if you have any questions, just just a little bit related to this, try and ask because I did do um, quite a lot more work that I won't really touch on. Oh, yeah. So uh, why talk about acoustic and noise in hospitals? Um, I think everyone in here, just from the previous talks, can relate to being in a vulnerable, vulnerable situation when you're in a hospital setting, both as a patient but also as a relative. And numerous studies have shown the negative impacts of noise on both staff and patients in a hospital setting. For staff, the um, noise impact can um, increase the number of errors being made. It negatively impacts the job satisfaction and the feeling of stress. Uh, amongst patients, noise will uh, increase the, is linked to increased heart rate, uh, blood pressure, and the increased use of um, pain reliefs, and also is linked to sleep impairment, and essentially it'll prolong the hospitalization. The intensive care patients are special, especially vulnerable, and noise has been linked to the state of delirium in intensive care patients, which is a really serious condition that worsens the already serious condition they're in. So the intensive care patients and units were the focal points of this um, study. And the main focus of the, um, of the project was to analyze a, a few different um, hospital units and whether they adhere to the um, current regulation in Denmark and whether this oh, um, <laughs> the um, current uh, acoustic environments in Danish hospitals offer a satisfying noise and acoustic uh, environment to staff and patients. And to get more of a nuanced look on this, I uh, had a more holistic approach where I used um, a few different methods to kind of um, investigate this topic. So I did uh, noise measurements in bed wards and the most common staff areas in four different units, along with the measuring the reverberation time. Um, I furthermore distributed questionnaires to staff, patients, and relatives, but due to COVID and the state of the patients, I only received uh, enough responses from the staff group. So that's what included, it's included today. And uh, I supported this with observations and informal interviews that I made during several trips or visits to each unit. And the current regulation in Denmark is a bit, um, week, I guess, on the topic of hospitals. There's no strict regulation uh, according to or regarding uh, room acoustics, but the Danish building regulations offer uh, some guideline uh, design parameters for the reverberation time, which is basically just that the reverberation time should be below 0 0.6 seconds in most rooms. Uh, in open plan offices, they recommend that the equivalent absorption area, it should be more than 1.1 times the floor area. Um, the Danish Working Environment Authority offers uh, restrictions on all workplaces in Denmark, and they, uh, they state that the equivalent absorption area should be at least 0 0.8 times the floor area. Um, they also have some uh, requirements regarding noise exposure to staff only, and this is uh, 85 dB um, over an eight-hour period uh, for work settings with a loud machinery. But the case with hospitals is that you're usually exposed to a lot of uh, loud noises from the treatment machines, 
um, but you still the work still requires a lot of concentration and communication where the Danish Working Environment Authority recommends a noise level of 40 to 45 decibel. So the hospital situation is a difficult, kind of falls in between categories. Um, the World Health Organization uh, recommends that the um, equivalent sound pressure levels shouldn't exceed 30 decibel throughout the day and evening and throughout the night time over 16 hours and 8 hours respectively. And I'll introduce you to the four units that I that participated in the study. The first one is a neurological emergency unit. They were located in a hundred, uh, more than 100 years old building. And staff expressed that the original layout of the building was ill-suited for the current use. The um, wards fitted one to six patients in each room. And in the... This is the centrally located conference and office room, which, according to staff, was the most noisy area of the building. Um, the other three units are intensive care units, where the difference from those three units compared to the first one is that they, the patients stay there for a longer time, stay there for four to six days, whereas the emergency unit, they only stay for, on average, 24 hours before being released or relocated. And the other difference is that in intensive care units, you have um, a 24-hour observations of the patient. So this is the yellow areas here. And this unit, those, it's like the main workstation for staff when they're not actively treating patients. And in this case, it's in the open connection to the hallways in the unit. Uh, furthermore, in this unit, they had a combined break room and conference in the middle of the, of the unit where they assigned tasks and dis discussed treatment, but also had breaks. So also quite a busy area. Uh, the second intensive care unit was the newest one. It was taken into use in the fall of 2020. And here they moved the, um, the observation post of the staff member, or usually a nurse, into the ward room. Um, this resulted in that, especially during nighttime, the st staff would be seated inside the ward along with the patients. And staff expressed that this was more strenuous to them and more stressful. They had to listen to the treatment equipment for throughout the entire night. And at the same time, they had to keep the light on in the ward room so the patient wouldn't be able to sleep in the same way because of the artificial lighting. Um, furthermore, they expressed that they often would open the sliding doors between the wards in order to talk to their colleagues during night because otherwise it can be a really long shift alone in a room with a very sick person. So this was uh, the newest hospital, but quite an interesting solution, I would say. They could also monitor the patients from the conference area out here which was also in open connection to the hallways. The last um, intensive care unit was, ha was the only one with more than one bed per room. They had one to two beds in most rooms, and then they had this large ward room with six beds and a medicine room. And they also had to, staff had to cross through the room in order to get to the observation area. Um, and this was, yeah, a really interesting choice, I think. <laughs> Um, looking at the measurement results of the reverberation time, we see on the left is the reverberation time in the wards, and on the right is the staff areas. And here we see that only two of the rooms do not align or is below the recommended value from the building regulations. Uh, the equivalent sound, uh, equivalent uh, absorption area was also well above the 1.1 times floria, which was recommended. So generally, the acoustic parameter, design parameter, was met in all of the units but two. Um, and looking at the noise levels, on the top one uh, graph, we see, oh, yeah, we see the um, noise level in the bed wards during uh, average over the day and evening time and night time. 
and all of them are far above the 30 decibel recommendation from the World Health Organization. Um, notice that the, least, the smallest difference between day and evening time compared to the night is in ICU-2, where the staff are staying throughout the night in the, um, uh, in the ward rooms. I thought that was quite, I guess it's obvious, but a negative impact, I guess, on the, on the patients. Uh, in the staff areas, generally the noise levels are around the 45. The average equivalent um, sound pressure level is around the f 45 lim uh, decibel limit. Um, but the noise measurements show that none of the either patient or staff areas are within the recommended threshold. And as I said, I distributed questionnaires as well. I got 125 replies, pretty equally distributed between the four units, uh, but obviously only from the staff group. And when asked to evaluate how um, noise has negatively impacted their work the past six months, over half or about half in all of the units were negatively impacted to some extent or great extent. Um, 20, about 20% 20 in all of the units have been, um, well, I can't even <laughs> see which one is. Uh, yeah, okay, so 20% of all the um, staff in all units expressed that they've been very uh, negatively affected. The noise has very <laughs> negatively affected their ability to concentrate on their work. And about 60% of all the um, staff members expressed that noise impacts negatively their um, feeling of stress in their work. Uh, I asked staff as well to evaluate the patient's experience since we couldn't, I, it wasn't really possible to get um, an, an input from the patients. And here we see that about 60% of in all the units expressed that the patients are very, or some, to some extent, are very negatively impacted by noise in the unit. However, they don't express it. Um, there's uh, quite a small share of uh, respondents who experience that the patients are complaining about noise. Uh, this can in part be because they're not able to, because they're really sick, but it can also be because they are in a vulnerable situation where they don't feel like complaining about the staff or the institution who are treating them. Um, furthermore, staff was asked to evaluate some uh, noise sources on how pleasant or annoying they were. And this is a few highlights. The talk and sound from staff was main, more pronounced or less, uh, less annoying to the, uh, the staff members in the intensive care unit number two. And this is the unit where they had most of their work areas excluded from their colleagues. So. I believe as a part of that, they're less exposed to talk from, uh, from sounds and sounds from staff and, uh, and thus less annoyed. <laughs> the phone ringing was unanimously the most annoying in all the units. And this speaks to a general problem and more, a lot of the alarms are redirected to the phones as well. So I think this is um, a lot of stress and annoyance are like attached to the, the sounds of phones ringing. Um, regarding the doors opening and closing, we see that um, this is expressed as significantly more annoying in intensive care unit one and two. And this is also where they had uh, work primary workplaces in open connection with the hallways. So here they would be more... Um, mm, yeah, they would obviously hear more <laughs> doors opening and closing and thus be more annoyed by it. Um, I think um, what's clear from this uh, study is that the um, floor plan of a unit can negatively impact the sound environment in a hospital. And I think this approach with using a more multifaceted um, view of uh, the hospital and uh, acoustic and noise environment may and compare the different units made it easier to identify uh, areas of like problematic areas and where to to improve 
Um, so I hope that from this we can learn that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the noise measurement showed that the acoustic parameters generally, or the acoustic parameters generally, are within the recommended um, threshold of the Danish regulations. However, the noise levels in all the units are too loud according to recommendations. And I think uh, it could be beneficial for legislation to look more into the specific case of hospital acoustics, not just as a workplace, but as a specific like building group. Um, yeah, actually, I think that's it. I think the main, another takeaway is that the um, mixing of uh, functions in the same rooms can be really problematic. Like the observation post moved into the ward room really creates a, a bad situation both for the patients and for the staff. And because of this, I think that um, acoustic engineers and the end users and architects, if you can use this kind of method in the early design stage, you can avoid these kind of issues going forward. <laughs> Any questions? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>